Hi, in this video we are going to learn how to solve radical equations. At the end of the video you should be able to solve a radical equation. Let's start with definition of terminologies. A radical equation contains a variable within a radical. Recall that you can solve quadratic equations by taking the square root of both sides. Similarly, radical equation can be solved by raising both sides to a power. So there are two possible methods, either taking square root or cube root, or having a raising both sides by a power. To simplify your radical index or your given rational exponent. Let's begin with the steps. On the left side are your steps. On the right side are a specific example. First step in solving radical equation is to isolate the radical. In your given example, the radical part is your cube root of x. And so when you try to isolate that with a minus 2, you will apply your properties of equations, which is the addition of on both sides so after addition 2 appears positive on the right side and you were able to isolate cube root of x on the left side as long as you're not violating any properties of equation and you are able to isolate your radical expression on the other side then you're good if there's a number in front it means it's multiplied to the radical expression to eradicate that value you are going to divide instead of adding or subtracting which is different method as we used here anyway step two raise both sides of the equations to the power equal to the index of the radical so this is instead of raising um square since the given is a cube root the opposite of cube root is cube so to cancel out cube root we raise it to cube but as a consequence to maintain balance of the equation we also this perform the same uh, property so we cubed both sides and then we will simplify cube root is opposite of cube and so it they cancel each other and you only have x the other side you have to perform 2 cube 2 times 2 times 2 and you have a after simplifying, you should be able to find your solution. In this specific example, x is equal to 8. One thing to remember for a square root that for, for a square root, the index of the radical is 2. If there is no number, it means 2. That's your square root or the index number. Let's have your first example. Solve each equation. Your given is 5 plus the square root of x plus 1 is equal to 16. First step, subtract 5 on both sides so that we can isolate x plus 1. On the left side, we will subtract both sides by 5. 5 eliminates here, and so you have 16 minus 5. 16 minus 5, simplify, you have 11. And now you have to find a way to get rid or to take out your square root. You do the opposite. You will square both sides. After squaring, your square root and your square cancels each other, but you have to perform your square of 11, which is 121. And so it's very easy part now. You just have to isolate x by getting taking out 1 by subtraction. Subtract both sides by 1 and you found your x. x is 120. As a checking, you can perform checking if you want. Let's test. You have x is 120. 120 plus 1 is 121. 21, 121 has a square root of 11. I mean, 11 plus 5 is 16. Square root of 121 is 11 plus 5 is 16. That means, indeed, our answer x is equal to 120 is the correct answer. Let's have another example. Here you have a number. Instead of there is a plus sign or minus sign, there is no 
plus sign or minus sign. It means 7 is multiplied to your given radical expression. So we're going to find the value of x in the given 7 times is cube root of 5x minus 7 is equal to 84. What do you do first? You have to divide both sides by 7 so that 7 cancels out on the left side. But you have to divide 84 divided by 7. It's actually 12. And then we're not going to do a square root. I mean a square since the index here is cube root or 3. We are going to do the opposite which is we will cube both sides. After cubing, the cube root and the cube cancels out, but you have to perform 12 cube root. It's it's a huge number. So you have 12 times 12 times 12, and it should be 1,728. The other side, on the left side, cube root and cube is cancelled out. Now you just have to add both sides by 7, and you should have 1,735. <laughs> And divide both sides by 5 and your x is 347 it's a huge number but here's the checking to show um, if you substitute 347x it should be the correct answer since it, 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 it results to 84 which is equal on the right side so indeed x is equal to 347 it's a huge number you can use calculator to verify your cube of higher than 10 numbers. Checking also, you can use your calculator. Let's have your next example. This is your back to your first example. This time, instead of no sign, it means this is plus sign. It's very clear. Unlike to the previous one, there's a 7 and then the index um, radical you are going to divide here. It's, it's very clear. You have 4 plus the square root of x minus 1 is equal to 5. The first thing you can do is get take out your 4 by subtraction. After subtraction, 4 cancels out, so you have 5 minus 4, which is equal to 1. And since there's no number, it means it's a square root. The opposite of square root is square. We will square both sides. After squaring both sides, Square root and square cancels each other. One square is one. And so by adding both sides by one, you found your x, it should be two. And by checking, here is the word. Since it resulted to an equal expression, five is equal to five, indeed our solution x is equal to two. It's the correct solution. We have one more. Again, there's no operation. It means it's multiplication. 6 times the square root of x plus 10 is equal to 42. To solve, we are going to perform division of 6 on both sides. After dividing, 6 on the left side cancels out. 42 divided by 6 is 7. To simplify your square root here, you are going to square both sides. After squaring, you have x plus 10 is equal to 49. Take out your 10 here by subtraction property. Minus 10, minus 10, x is, should be 39. And here is the checking. 39 should be the correct answer. Okay. Now, what if you're given with both sides of the equation containing radicals. How do you solve this one? So we are just going to directly square both sides. Since square root is opposite of square, this cancels out. Square root is opposite of square, cancels out, but 3 has to be squared. So the rest will not change, but 3 squared is 3 times 3 becomes 9. And now it looks a very familiar um, equation problem. You can perform your distributive property 9 times 327, 9 times negative 2, negative 18. And then isolate your variables and on one side and numbers on one side. 
So what happened? Um, it subtracted seven on both sides. Let me show. Ma no, minus seven. Minus seven x. It resulted to twenty. And then here plus eighteen, plus eighteen. It resulted to it resulted to twenty. To continue, to find x, divide both sides by twenty, and so you have one. All this complicated problem and x is just equal to 1. Okay, there's a checking here and since it's resulted to equal results 3 is equal to 3 then x is equal to 1. Let's have another example. Square root of 8x plus 6 is equal to 3 times the square root of x. Again, we are just going to square both sides. The rest will not change. You will, will just take out square root because it's opposite to square, but 3 becomes 9. There's no operation. It means we are having a multiplication sign. So um, we can take out and we will isolate a variable in one side and number on one side. So I think it's minus 8x on both sides. So it, you have 1x. 1x is equal to 6, and actually, x is found. x is equal to 6. Here's the checking. And since the result is the same, x is indeed equal to 6. Another example, this time it's cube roots. So what do we do? You have cube root of x plus 6 is equal to 2 times cube root of x minus 1. Instead of squaring, we are going to cube both sides. The, the cube and cube root cancels out on both radical expressions, but 2 will be cubed. Cube of 2 is actually 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Perform distributive property, you will have 8x minus 8. And then isolate. Let's see. It should be minus 8x. Minus 8x. I hope the, the result on your second line is what is I'm trying to do. You have minus 6, minus 6. So let's see. So, nope. That's not the path. What the PowerPoint showed is that you have minus 1x minus 1x so you have 7x and then plus 8 plus 8 and then you got 14 and then divide by 7 divide by 7 x is equal to 2 and so here's the checking and after performing your checking it shows an equal result and so x is equal to 2 Here is a case of equations with rational exponents. An equation with rational exponents contains a variable within a rational exponent. Recall that you can rewrite rational exponents into radical form. Similarly, like radical equations, it can be solved by raising both sides to a power. Let's have an example. I mean, First things you need to remember, to find a power, multiply the exponents. So if you have a expression raised to 1 half, to make this 1, we will raise it to 2. Because 1 half, hold on, 1 half times 2, this is supposed to be multiplication, is equal to 2 over 2. Which means 1. The whole expression is raised to 1. Okay, now here's your example. Solving equations with rational exponents. You could either raise both sides by an exponent or rewrite it into radical form. So you have here the expression 5x plus 7 is raised to 1 third is equal to 3. So the first method is writing it in radical form. One third is 
power over root. Power is 1, root is 3. Root means, since you are given 3 as a root, it means cube root. And so it's the same procedures that we did in our first examples, first sets of examples. And so you just cube both sides. Cube root and cube cancels out. You just have to cube 3. 3 times 3, 9 times 3, 27. The other side, it will just, it will just be 5x plus 7 because cube root cancels out cube. And so after that, you just subtract both sides by 7 and you have 20. Minus 7, minus 7, this cancels out. 27 becomes 20 after subtracting 7. And so, divide both sides by 5x. Actually, it should be divide. I don't know why it says factor. Or maybe find the number that when you multiply, you get 20. That's probably the factor means. But actually, you can also divide both sides by 5. And x should be 4. That's how you solve equations with rational expense exponents you can rewrite it in radical form remember if it's if the exponent is a fraction it's power over root power goes on the right side root goes on the left side let's have another example so let's see how this is done you have x plus 5 to the power of 1 third is equal to 3 first write it in radical form it's a cube root and so you cube both sides and so you have 9 and then you have x plus 5 on the left side. 9 on the right side, x plus 5 on the left side. And then, no, I mean 27. And then subtract both, both sides by 5, so you have 22. And then it's done. Let's have some more. Here, you are going to... Here's, the, the, here's a different method. Instead of writing it in radical form, you can actually directly write, raise it like the one in the remember something. You can actually raise both sides instead of writing it in radical form. So to make this one, you have to uh, square both sides because 1 half times 2 is 1. But 3, when raised to 2, becomes 9. 9 squared is 81. So you watch out also. You don't just cancel out this cancels it's it's only affecting the x plus 6 with the one half the 2 should also be a power of 3 that's why it becomes 9 of course 9 times 9 is 81 and then you just simplify by distributive property you have 9x plus 54 minus 54 on both sides you have 27 divided divide not both sides by 9 it's 3 and so you have your answer Now, raising each side of an equation to an even power may include introduce extraneous solution. An extraneous solution is a solution to an equation that seems to be right, but when we check it by substituting it into the original equation, turns out not to be right. Okay? Let me show you an example. You have here an example, 2x is equal to 4x plus 8 was raised uh, to 1 half. Using the power property, raising both sides by 2, this 2x becomes 4x squared. On the other side, it does not change. Now, since there's a square here, we cannot perform your basic equation properties. This is the case of a quadratic equation. If you remember your quadratic equation, you are going to perform factoring to find two roots by zero factor property. Of course, you can also use your graphing method technique wherein the parabola intersects on the x-axis which are the solutions or the values of x. But also, remember, this is an example of extra new solution. It will make sense. Let me show you. So by writing the 
left the right side value for x plus 8 into an a quadratic equation actually you did uh, we did subtraction minus 4x minus 8 after subtraction it was now it's now in the standard quadratic formula equation and then you perform your factoring what was done first is 4 was factored out on each term so it becomes x x and then 2 now it's easier to factor 4 does not affect your values of x for factoring but we need to factor this but this is so easy negative 2 has a factor of 1 and negative 2 to make up with the sum of negative 1 on the middle term so your factor should be x x minus 2 x plus 1 and so by zero fa factor property equating x minus 2 into 0 x plus 1 is equal to 0 your first root x is equal to 2 your second root is x minus 1 here's your the first the, the four outside since there's no x it does not give help us find uh, any root the, the, the factor x minus 2 your root should be 2 x plus 1 when you write it in zero factor property or equate it to 0 negative 1 so 2 and negative 1 are the roots but you will think both are correct by checking use substitution to check your for extraneous solution when we substitute 2 it resulted to an equal 4 is equal to 4 when we substitute substitute negative 1 it will end up to a not true equation supposed to be when we actually work it out negative 2 is equal to 2 but they are not equal therefore negative 1 is extraneous solution it's part of the solution after working it out but when substitution it turns out not to be true it does not make the problem true that makes it negative 1 extraneous solution therefore only 2 is the correct solution okay let's have another example so here given the expression 2x plus 15 is raised to 1 half is equal to x to solve we are going to square both sides or raise both sides by the reciprocal of the power see that's another trick to 1 over 2 is 2 over 1 so after raising all this power cancels out and 2 but you have an x squared what you need to know this is that you have to be aware of extraneous solution if you have an x squared unlike in our previous examples there was no x squared after performing your raising both sides by 2 or raising both sides by 3. Writing this in standard form, you will have x squared minus 2x minus 15 because you can subtract both sides by minus 2x and then minus 15. Now, by factoring, what factors of 15 will give you a negative 2? Actually, it's 3 times 5 and 5 should be negative and I zero factor property equate both x minus 5 and x plus 3 is equal to 0 your first root should be positive 5 and your second root should be plus negative 3 now one probably only one is a true solution the other one is extraneous let's see by checking is it 5 or 3 actually 5 let's see if you have the 3 it does not give us an equal result 3 is not equal to negative 3 therefore only 5 is the correct solution negative 3 is an extraneous solution it's part of the solution but after substituting it does not make the given radical equation true only 5 is the true solution okay I guess this is the last or there's two more you have your problem the square root of negative 3x plus 33 is equal to 5 minus x by squaring both sides 
this will be a lot. So square root and square cancels out. 5 minus x is a square of binomial. It will be a foil. And so it resulted to, it should result to the first 5 squared is 25, negative x squared is positive x. This is the middle term shortcut 2 times negative x is negative 2x, negative 2x times 5 is negative 10x. And now you simplify by uh, properties of equation so that we will have a standard form. And after simplifying, your standard form in quadratic equation should be x squared minus 7x minus 8. What was what happened? So it combined negative 10x plus 3x plus 3x negative 7 minus 33 minus 33 25 minus 33 is negative 8. So to factor this one to find your x, you should factor this first. Negative 8 has a factor of 1 times 8. To come up with a negative 7 result, 8 should be negative, 1 should be positive. So here is the factor. By zero factor property, x is equal to 8, and the other root is x is equal to negative 1. By checking which one is the true solution and which one is the other. So, okay, I think we lost your extraneous solution. Okay. So, here is the test, testing 8, actually it will not give us an, a correct equal value both sides, so therefore 8 is not the correct solution, it is the extraneous. Therefore, your negative 1 is therefore your correct solution. And I guess we are on our last example. It is extraneous, it's not the correct solution, the only correct solution is negative 1. This should be the last example. So, you have the square root of 2x plus 14 is equal to x plus 3. You square both sides, so you have, on the, on the left side, you only have 2x plus 14. On the other side, you have x squared, x squared, and then 9, and then the middle term is 2 times 3, 6 times x, 6x. X. 2 times 3, 6, 6 times x, 6x. X. So you have x squared plus 6x plus 9. Combine like terms, so minus 14, minus 14 is going to be negative 5. Minus 2, minus 2, it's going to be 4x. So it's x squared plus 4x minus 5. So the factor of negative 5 should be 1 times 5, and then 1 should be negative, so that negative 1 plus 5 is 4. And therefore, your solutions, your possible solutions are x is negative 5, and x is equal to 1 by zero factor property. Let's see if your negative 5 or 1 is the true solution. By checking, Negative 5 is actually not your solution. It's the extraneous. Therefore, your, neg your positive 1 is your correct solution. 5 is extraneous. The only solution is 1. Okay? You can watch the video again. And hopefully, you're now able to solve radical equations. Thank you.